Today, I'm going to teach small business owners just like you how to use a POS or point of sale to run your business. We'll cover ringing in sales and orders, close of day reporting, and I will show you the one step that most every small business owner forgets to take but can really help grow your business. Thanks for joining me. I'm Mary King, staff writer and restaurant and retail specialist for Fit Small Business. Let's jump right in and let's start with the most common POS function first, ringing in a sale. Once we're logged into the POS, it's just four steps. Add items to the sale, connect a customer to the sale, and this is the step that nearly everyone forgets to do. It takes two seconds, but it can really help grow your sales because then you have all of that customer data to influence your future marketing and loyalty campaigns. It really helps you personalize the experience for your customers. So just get in the habit of doing it and train your staff to do it too. Uh, next, you want to apply any discounts, coupons, or rewards that might apply to this sale, then process it payment. It's that easy. Modern cloud-based point-of-sale systems are so intuitive and user-friendly that it truly only takes a few button presses to complete a transaction. Today, I'm using the Square Retail point-of-sale to show you these functions because the baseline POS is free and I can run it on an iPad that I already have. If you want to kick the tires on this system yourself, there's a link in the description box to sign up for a free Square POS account. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at another type of sale, processing orders that come in over the phone or online. The steps for processing a phone order in a POS are virtually the same as processing any sale. You'll add items to the sale, connect a customer, apply discounts, but then you'll also need to note how the customer prefers to receive their order. Will they pick it up in your store? Will you ship it to them? Will the item be delivered locally by a third-party driver or by an on-staff courier? If you offer shipping or delivery, you'll need to apply those fees and secure a delivery address before processing the payment. Processing an online order in a POS is slightly different. Most modern POS systems communicate directly with e-commerce channels like online ordering sites or social media ordering tools. Square, for example, includes a free online store that connects directly to the POS. So in that case, the first step with an online order is getting the notification in your POS terminal that a new order has been placed. Then you typically have the option to accept or reject the order. The next step from there is noting how the customer prefers to receive their items. If your store offers shipping, you can usually print the shipping label from your POS terminal via an integration with the Postal Service, UPS, FedEx, uh, using a thermal label printer or a standard office printer. If you offer local delivery, your next step might be assigning an on-staff driver or hailing a third-party courier. Or if your customer prefers to pick up in the store, all you'll do is set the order aside until they arrive. Unlike a cash register, a POS can handle all of these processes in the terminal itself. You don't need several offline manual systems to track all this information. If you permit customers to pay for orders in store, as many uh, takeout restaurants do, you'll keep the order check open until the customer arrives to pick up their order and then pay. But if you only accept orders with advance payment, then your online ordering tool has already processed the payment and all you need to do is mark the order as complete and close the check. After a full day of profitable sales, the next task you'll perform in your POS is closing your day. This is typically a more involved process for restaurants that operate with different teams during different day parts than for, and also for retail operations like grocers that have multiple registers and cash tills. But virtually every POS system has a checklist for close of day procedures to ensure that you don't miss any steps. If your business accepts cash payments, the first thing you'll need to do is balance any cash tills you have open and your POS will have a cash report that you can print directly from the terminal that logs the day's cash transactions and tells you how much cash you should expect to be in the cash drawer or to have on hand in general. When everything balances, which it typically does within a few cents, you'll close your cash drawers in the POS terminal. And while you're at the terminal, you'll ensure that all your checks have been closed and check that all of your hourly employees have been clocked out. This is very important. 
Then you can initiate the close of day procedure. During this process, your point of sale is batching all of your credit card transactions and preparing to send that to your payment processor. Your POS will automatically apply sales or employee hours that are logged after your close of day as connected to the following business day, which really handily keeps your reports tidy and helps you create accurate future forecasts for sales and labor costs. And that's the basics of how to use a POS system in most any customer facing business. But what about the non-customer facing parts? That's where your management dashboard comes in. In addition to your POS terminal, Every POS also has a management dashboard. Sometimes people call this the back office dashboard, but that's kind of a misnomer to me because nowadays you don't need a back office to access this dashboard. You can get to it from any web-enabled device, whether it's in your office or in your living room. On a daily basis, you'll most frequently use the management dashboard for reporting and maybe updating stock if you use inventory tools. Most reports, like your daily summaries, sales, and labor breakdowns, and stock tracking, live in your management dashboard. The POS automatically generates reports from your sales, labor, and customer data. You'll get reports that show your sales by hour, by employee, by customer. This is where a POS has an extreme advantage over an electronic cash register. You'll be able to immediately see your average sale amount or check averages, identify your top selling items or top performing staff members. You'll get an automatic summary of your daily sales by payment type, item category, track your daily discounts, voids, and comps. Beyond reporting, there are many functions that a POS system can perform that will also help save you time and increase profits. A POS might include add-ons that help you manage inventory, manage employees, manage customers, can help you run loyalty and marketing campaigns, support built-in online ordering, like we talked about before, can help you ship packages, manage local delivery drivers, and forecast future sales and costs. If you want to get a deeper look at some other POS functions and also maybe see a different POS dashboard, uh, check out our video on Lightspeed Retail's reporting and analytics module. Uh, and thank you so much for watching. And until next time, happy selling and have a great service.